Hello, welcome to Accounting Hub. I'm Professor George Skarpin, PhD in Accounting, and our topic today is Revenue Recognition, Time Value of Money. So first of all, our video is not about time value of money. Actually, we have a playlist about time value of money, about present value, future value, period rates, annuities, and so on, and the link is in our video description. But if it is not about time value of money, is it about what? It is about considering time value of money on revenue recognition. Why do we have it? Because if we consider the five steps to recognize in revenue, the third one, the transaction price. And time value of money, it is all about price. How? If the time value of money is a significant part of the contract, the seller should view the transaction price as considering of two components. The delivery component, that is the revenue. That is our revenue recognition, because here is where we will, as we have here on step number two, uh, we will satisfy the performance obligation. And step two and step five. But however, there is a financing component, which is interest considered paid to the customer in the case of prepayment or to the seller in the case of a receivable. So we may have here interest expense or interest revenue. In most countries, sellers can assume the financing component is not significant if the period between delivery and payment or, or the period of the accounts receivable is less than a year. So US and most of the countries, if your accounts receivable is a current asset less than one year, then you don't need to consider time value of money. It is optional. However, if it, if it is more than one year, then you need to consider the time value of money. You need to work with the present values. And then let's check our Excel file. Remember, our Excel files, they are free and the link to download is in our video description. So the first one, the prepayment. On January 1st, 2022, Scarpin Corporation enters into a contract with, with Santiago Stores to deliver 10 $300 products that have a combined fair value of $3,000, 10 times 300. We have a prepayment case here. Santiago pays Scarpin $2,850 on January 1st, and Scarpin agrees to deliver the products on December 31st. So, okay, the contract is on January 1st, but the delivery will be on this of December. So, in January, we have the cash collection. Cash, 2,850. Deferred revenue, 2,850. Let's zoom in here. And on delivery, when we recognize our revenue, what do we have? Let's delete it and do it together. So, okay, we have no deferred revenue anymore because we are recognizing our revenue. So we need to close this account. So we need to debit 2,850. The sales revenue is the fair value of this transaction, $3,000. Uh, this journal entry is not balanced. We need a debit. We need the interest expense. And the interest expense is the $150 remaining. So it is the interest that we are paying uh, by this deferred revenue or a discount. But here is not a discount, technically a discount. Uh, it is an interest expense. And then this is the time value of money the difference between cash and sales revenue. Okay, so we didn't need to go to the present values formulas and so on. We are working with given numbers. If you wanna check our present value formulas, go to that time value of money playlist. Okay, this is prepayments. We have deferred revenue. What about receivables? That is the same, however, we deliver the product on January 1st, but we will collect the money on December 31st. So 
So how do we do that? Let's delete all of these numbers. So, okay, notes receivable. We will collect $3,100. So $3,100. Our revenue, our deferred revenue. Here it is, uh, or, sorry, it is sales revenue. We are recognizing it now. Our sales revenue, $3,000. And the discount on notes receivable is the number to balance. So it is the $100 remaining. So it is a contra count of the notes receivable. And then we are collecting the money. So what do we have? We are collecting $3,100. $3,100. Uh, we are collecting the notes receivable, so we have no more $3,100. We need to close this note receivable. If we are closing the notes receivable, we need to close the discount on notes receivable. We need to close this $100 on debit. And then the interest revenue is the number to balance. So it will be the discount, by the way. So the number to balance, sum of debits minus sum of credits, the $100 remaining. Okay, guys, easy. If we have more years, we need to record the uh, interest, uh, interest revenue more than one year, the same as the prepayment. So it's just a matter of how many transactions do we have. Okay, guys, that's it. Thank you so much. Questions or comments, leave it here or email me at jscarping at gmail.com. Have a very nice day and God bless you.